These images show organs that have tumors, masses of cells that are growing in an uncontrolled way. Sometimes tumors grow in place without spreading, but some tumors spread from their site of origin and invade other tissues throughout the body. That's what cancer is. As an AP Bio student, what do you need to know about cancer? In this video, made expressly for AP Bio, we'll look at one, how cancer relates to cell cycle checkpoints, and two, how genetic mutations and cell communication errors can prevent cells from obeying these checkpoints, which can result in cancer. Our goal is to let you know exactly what you need to know about cancer so that you can ace your next AP Bio test or get a four or a five on the AP Bio exam. Hey, I'm Mr. W, a retired AP Biology teacher. I spent years creating lessons to help my students succeed in AP Bio. To help you succeed, I've created this video along with the learn-biology.com AP Bio curriculum and the Biomania AP Bio app. During the cell cycle, a dividing cell has to pass through checkpoints. A checkpoint is just what it sounds like. The cell checks for certain internal conditions. These conditions include cell size, the integrity of replicated DNA, or the presence of certain structures inside the cell. If these conditions are met, the cell proceeds through the checkpoint and continues to divide. If not, cell division pauses. Two types of genes code for proteins that control the cell's interaction with these checkpoints as it moves through the cell cycle. The first type are tumor suppressor genes, which interact with the cell cycle in a way that pauses the cell cycle. The second type are proto-oncogenes, which encourage the cell to pass through the checkpoints, moving it toward completion of the cell cycle. The term tumor suppressor is self-explanatory, but let's look at the term proto-oncogene in more detail. Proto means first, like the prototype of a car. Onco means related to cancer, an oncologist treats cancer. But proto-oncogenes in and of themselves aren't bad. We need them in order for cells to divide, and if there wasn't cell division, multicellular organisms like you and me couldn't grow and repair our tissues. Examples of proteins produced by proto-oncogenes are cyclins, growth factors, or growth factor receptors. The problem is when proto-oncogenes mutate. Then they can become cancer-causing oncogenes. Here's a great analogy to help you understand the difference between these two types of tumor suppressor genes and the way that mutations in them can lead to cancer. The analogy involves cars and driving. When tumor suppressor genes are working, they function like a car's brake pedal. The brake keeps the car from moving forward. Similarly, tumor suppressor genes keep the cell from moving through the cell cycle. When tumor suppressor genes mutate, they no longer produce proteins that prevent cell division, even when cell cell division shouldn't happen. It's as if a car's brake pedal were broken, so the car can no longer stop. Proto-oncogenes act like a gas pedal. A gas pedal moves a car forward. In the same way, proto-oncogenes enable the cell to move forward through the cell cycle. But when proto-oncogenes mutate, they can become oncogenes. Oncogenes cause cells to divide when they shouldn't, which can lead to uncontrolled growth that can lead to cancer. It's like the gas pedal of a car is pinned to the floor. The car is accelerating even when it shouldn't. Now we understand the difference between tumor suppressor genes and oncogenes. So let's look at these genes in the context of cell signaling systems. If you need to review cell signaling, then follow the link below to learn-biology.com where you can find an interactive tutorial about these systems. We're gonna start with a proto-oncogene called RAS, which is implicated in about a third of all cancers in human beings. In its normal form, the RAS gene codes for molecules that encourage the cell to progress through the cell cycle. Here's RAS as a proto-oncogene. RAS is a G protein. You can see that it's positioned on the inside of the membrane close to a receptor. When a ligand binds with that receptor, RAS becomes activated and it initiates a phosphorylation cascade. At the end of the cascade, a transcription factor is activated that codes for a growth factor. That growth factor encourages is the cell to move through the cell cycle. When the RAS proto-oncogene mutates, it becomes an oncogene. The oncogene version of RAS is constitutively activated. That means that it's activated all of the time. Even without a signal from outside of the cell, RAS activates the phosphorylation cascade and transcribes genes that produce a growth factor. The result is that the cell enters into the cell cycle when it shouldn't. This kind of inappropriate cell division 
can lead to cancer. Oncogenes can also involve the overexpression of receptors. Overexpression means that the cell produces too much of a gene product. One such receptor is HER2, which is overexpressed in about 25% of all breast cancers. HER2 stands for Human Epidermal Growth Factor Receptor 2, and its name tells you exactly what it does. It's a receptor for a growth factor, a chemical signal that signals a cell to divide. A normal breast cell with a proto-oncogenic form of HER2 has the right amount of these receptors. When these receptors bind with an epidermal growth factor, a signal transduction pathway is initiated that tells the cell to divide. But the oncogenic form of the HER2 gene codes for too many HER2 receptors. As a result, even when the concentration of epidermal growth factor is very low, the cell picks up the signal and enters into the cell cycle. And as a result of that, cells with this mutated oncogene divide when they shouldn't, potentially leading to cancer. Understanding how these signaling pathways work has set the stage for new cancer therapies. When the association between overexpression of HER2 and breast cancer was discovered, the idea occurred to cancer researchers that if a molecule could be developed that blocked the HER2 receptor, then the signaling pathway that HER2 stimulates could also be blocked. That's exactly what the anti-cancer drug Herceptin does. Herceptin is a bioengineered antibody that attaches to HER2 receptors. When Herceptin attaches to the HER2 receptor, it doesn't stimulate a signaling pathway that initiates cell division, but instead it stops the signal. The actual mechanism by which Herceptin works is still being investigated, but Herceptin, along with other HER2 binding antibodies, has been a key tool in fighting breast cancer for over 20 years. Years. We're about to turn our attention to how tumor suppressor genes work, but before we do, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to Science Music Videos. Also, if you have any questions or just want to share some appreciation, please leave a comment. This video has a related tutorial on learn-biology.com, and if you complete my course, I guarantee you a 4 or a 5 on the AP Bio exam. You can also gain additional support through the quizzes, flashcards, interactive FRQs, and interactive diagrams on my Biomania AP Bio app. Details and links are below. The P53 gene is an example of a tumor suppressor gene. It produces a protein, also called P53, that is found inside the nucleus and which plays several roles that protect the body from cancer. P53 is so important that it's called the guardian of the genome. Here's how it works. Let's say that a cell experiences DNA damage. This could occur from an error during DNA replication or some mutation causing agent such as ultraviolet radiation. Through various mechanisms, a cell can detect DNA damage, and that initiates a signaling cascade. This cascade results in the activation of the P53 protein. P53, once activated, initiates transcriptions of other genes. The genes that P53 transcribes can produce proteins with a variety of effects. These include activating DNA repair proteins in response to DNA damage, pausing the cell cycle at the G1 checkpoint so that DNA repair has time to occur. This prevents cells from mutations from reproducing, and finally, initiating apoptosis. That's programmed cell death when the cell's DNA damage can't be repaired. But if a mutation occurs in the P53 gene, the cell loses these protective anti-cancer mechanisms. That's because a mutation in the P53 gene causes the P53 protein to be defective or missing. As a result, the cell will continue to move through the cell cycle with broken or damaged DNA, increasing the chance that the cell will become cancerous. Cancer is all about unregulated cell division. You can learn all about normal cell division by watching my music video, Mitosis.